Hello everyone, it is a long overdue analysis and review of Batman White Knight episode 5 of 8. So we are past the halfway point and it very much feels like it. Things are really kicking off. If you've been um, lacking Batman action so far, you're starting to really get it now. They they hinted it in the, the last one, but he's on full form now. And... Um, yeah, he's, the Joker is um, not setting the the pace anymore. Uh, things are re everybody, everyone you see here is helping move the pace along, including this madam right here. Uh, this is the cover I have first cover I have very little to say about, other than it's good. Um, it's good. Let's get right into it. So we have um. A kind of cliche scene here of like it's just a training slash lovers scene, but it, not too much time is spent on it, and it establishes the Joker's. We're getting more clues as to what these pills of his do, and how unhealthy this situation really is, and how alarmed Harley should be dis in in uh, spite of how alarmed she actually is which is not very much the the pills of jokers contain steroids and then he starts uh, coughing and she is concerned and he says oh they, they just give me acid or, or they make me cough or something like that now this is joker roided up. Now if you remember him in the previous episode when they are both in the scud he's very you know wiry. Not 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 even wiry, he's just skinny um, as we are used to Joker being. Um, this body doesn't suit him and that's because it's artificial and it does look, if you compare it, we'll, we'll look later at Batman's body and Bane, if you remember Bane's body and Croc's bodies versus Joker's bodies I find that when they're drawn, the former have very functional looking bodies. These are bodies that do things. These are bodies built for a purpose. This is just standard roid body, you know, lots of round basketball muscles and very little fat. Um, so he's, yeah, 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 he's, um, I feel that this is a little bit of an allegory for mental illness in a way. Because, and I'm going to assume you've probably read this book, so I'm just going to go over certain things and give you my thoughts on it. Um, I think if you're committed to the series, you're going to buy it at this stage. And if you're joining me late, then there's so many spoilers that you'll probably just go back and watch the previous video. So I'm just going to go over things I found interesting. In the hope that indeed you will continue to stick with this series. Now, the Joker has been, if he's to be believed, suppressing his Joker side to allow out his Jack Napier side, which it's ambiguous as to whether this is just a name because um, that name is already established for him, or if this is the Jack Napier, the gangster, in which case we're just replacing one evil with another, aren't we? Um, and I think it's a good allegory for mental illness and that he's popping these pills to suppress his Joker side. He's not doing anything to address the problem. Uh, as Joker, he never made any attempt to change his behaviour you could argue that he's in no position to do so because he never wanted to and that the pills suppressing Joker would then allow him to deal with his problem and that's where I feel this becomes an allegory for mental illness because he's taking the pills but he's not addressing the behaviour so yeah okay he can keep the Joker suppressed if that's indeed the plan at all we don't know um, and he can do that as long as he needs to, but he's getting horrible side effects. He's not dealing with the underlying behaviour. He's not dealing with his obsessive issues. He's not dealing with his uh, his egotism. And he's engaging in more unhealthy behaviour. We then uh, get to see how uh, the roids really don't help him much with fighting. However, th again, this, this is Smurf's version of Joker, but we're... It's pretty well established that the Joker is incredibly quick. He's not a fighter. It's more akin to, in a horror movie, the way they move in horror movies, you know? They know how to handle a knife, and they're extremely quick and agile, but it's not like an action scene. And that's the way the Joker, to my mind, always moved. And to see him in a stand-up fight, 
you know, it's, yeah. And, and this is the other thing. Is normally, this would be a scene where he would be laughing, but he's not. He's angry. And that's uh, just a nice thing, you know, it's a more human reaction. Uh, I quite like that. I can't wait for Neo Harley when the, the steroids really take effect and uh, he has to come off them and then he gets bitch tits. That's going to be a very interesting sequel uh, to the series. And uh, maybe maybe Neo Harley and Neo Joker, he's, he's going to look like Bob from Fight Club. It's, it's going to be glorious. Now, there's this brilliant scene with Batman, Nightwing and Barbara. I really enjoy it mainly because I, I don't know what it is about it, but I love seeing Batman work a crime scene. I love seeing him stooped in the in the the dark, looking for clues and finding things. And and he even has little evidence baggies. I love it. This is my... Uh, I absolutely love it when Batman's like that. And um, see what I mean about the Batman's body versus Joker. It, it's, it's a more powerful looking body. It's less aesthetically pleasing... It's a powerful body because it's been used, not because it's been like sculpted. Anyway, this uh, Nightwing Batman dynamic is going to get really interesting. I'm going to leave out spoilers and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to actually zoom in so you can't see too much of the dialogue because I really want you to buy this book, but I also want you to watch my videos. And um, it's a nice symmetry we've got here with uh, Batman, Barbara, and Nightwing with with the one side, and then Joker, Neo Joker and Harley on the other side, and I think they're all going to complement each other going forward, and we're going to see how the, these, the two sidekicks have the effect on their um, main character in similar ways, uh, in that Barbara and Harley are sympathetic and supportive to their main characters, Whereas Nightwing and Neo Joker are not only seeking to replace, but become more extreme versions in order to rebel against their main characters. Uh, similar motivations, and uh, yeah, I, I find that really interesting. And that's, uh, that's all I'm going to say about this scene. The next part is one of my favourite moments. I love this panel, by the way. It's absolutely stunning. And the colouring really comes into effect here. I couldn't help but think of Batman Begins with that sort of uh, brown and grey colour palette. And that looks really like Wayne Tower. And you've got the the rails, the train lines going here. And then the city is just stacked on top of itself here. Uh, I absolutely love that. Um, you know, it, who would want to try and patrol this urban sprawl, you know? And then you see him. And uh, the lighting is brilliant, aside from the glare. And brilliant brilliant drawings. So this is one of my favourite moments in the whole series and I think it's going to turn into one of my favourite Batman moments. Batman and Harley, he it's not so much a confrontation as just a, a simple meeting. So he does the old uh, sneaky sneaky uh, to come and meet her. He uh, trusts her with the evidence he's found in regards to uh, the mind control situation and they have a, a long discussion about the Joker and about Batman and we find out that uh, Batman and Harley actually have a history, not a romantic one, just a... they've realised that there is a pattern to the Joker's behaviour and indeed Batman's and that they both need certain things and it's not always about the law and it's not always about getting the best solution, it's about getting the, the solution that will work best. So the best solution would obviously be Joker being cured and happy forever but that's not going to happen, that's an unrealistic goal. So what they do is they try and keep him placated as much as they can. Um, and we we find out about that. And they've bonded over... Um, she was there when Batman lost Jason. And um, he was there when she lost Joker. Because she realised he'd gone over the deep end. So they, they have this connection here. Which uh, Sean Gordon Murphy has noticed. And, and I really like it. Um, I also like this. Uh, <laughs> he punches through a, a stack of bricks. Which is obviously... A little nod to Batman Year One, uh, all, like the chair thing I mentioned in in a previous video, uh, very visually similar. But also, is this an accidental, um, you know, is this an accidental foreshadowing that the Joker is completely screwed? Because no amount of steroids is going to protect you from that. If that's the Joker's skull, and Batman gets one hit in, <laughs> bearing in mind the Batman's all armored up and everything, you know. 
And then uh, we have this scene here, which might not seem important, and you're like, uh -huh, crotch, but uh, this is another sign that Sean Gordon Murphy is becoming very, very much more comfortable with these characters visual visually. I mean, Batman's poses are no longer... Remember I complained about him being in that static pose, he's standing upright with his knee up and the cape's billowing and there was too much of that pose. Well, now, look, he, we've got like a... It's not quite a worm's eye view and we've got him in the extreme foreground and I know the crotch is there, but like the fist is the centre of this panel. Like the, the Batman, the, you know, the Batman is raging and this is the how he d um, transmits that rage to the world and it is front and centre in this panel. And then we get another absolutely beautiful panel. I'm not going to tell you too much about the story because like I say, I like you watching my videos but I also don't want to ruin it for people. So um, there we have it. Now um, I'm going to skip forward a few pages and uh, Batman is in... Wayne Manor and there is a break in and he has uh, this brilliant moment of transformation where he realises he has to have his um, disguise of Bruce Wayne prepared so there we see the little silhouette he did this before with the Joker and he's all Batman up by then he turns into a complete uh, you know ridiculous dandy I joked uh, Sean Gordon Murphy put up a thing saying uh, where does he hide his bat suit under this um, and I just said, oh, no, he's just such a master of misdirection that they think that they've seen him in a bathrobe, but he was actually in the costume the whole time. He's just that good. But um, I just love the visual and the body language it shows off. And um, he's, like, frightened them. But it's a cool thing because by not presenting himself as a threat, he's gotten them to run away because they're like, oh, God, we can't just you know, kill Bruce Wayne or whatever. But if he'd attacked them, then that would have been a huge mistake. And then he allows himself to be... Uh, you know, trussed up and um, knocked over and things like that, and he's he's concerned about what property they've stolen, um, etc., etc., and then immediately back to standard Bruce Wayne. And we have this moment where uh, it's Nightwing investigating it, and uh, Nightwing looks fucking ridiculous, and I can't help but wonder if this is like a joke on the part of the Joker, He's the Joker, and I I wonder if it's like yeah okay he says he wants Barbara and Nightwing to come work for him etc. But he still has absolute contempt for him, and he's going to make him wear this absolutely ridiculous outfit uh, with his little mask and everything still intact. Bearing in mind how cool he looked before, I can't help thinking it's a little visual joke. And he is called the Joker, and it is Sean Gordon Murphy is a very. Uh, he likes details like that, I can tell so far. So uh, yeah, this is the bit where, like, you know, a small mistake. But it's it's for dramatic effect, and it, it has that dramatic effect. So, um, yeah. Paw Patrol then ensues with the GTO, the Gotham... Oh, I can't remember. Something to do with super criminals and terrorism and stuff. Uh, they're the new vigilante corps, but they're state-sanctioned. And this whole thing I think it's meant I can't tell the tone of this this is one thing I, I really didn't like it and I found it very jarring but at the same time I don't know if it's maybe meant to be a bit cringy because you know they're all just going around like the Power Rangers and you know oh let's assemble and they've got their cool cars and, and you know they are it is a cool car chase but um you know they, they, they look silly in their uniforms and you know they have these souped up Batmobile things and they don't know how to use them. I mean, there there's a lot of car chasing going on, but not a lot of actual apprehending, you know? And, um, you know, they're all congratulating each other on how good they're doing, and it's just cringy, and I can't, I, like I say, it's Paw Patrol. And, um, but I can't help thinking that's deliberate, because what happens next is... A Green Lantern advert. What happens next is... a load of collateral damage and Bane and Croc getting run over, which Batman did before and got hell for it. And they're breaking public property, and Batman got hell for that as well. But it's okay when they do it, kind of thing, you know? And um, that's why I think it's perhaps a little bit deliberate. You know, they're going around slapping each other on the back because they know they've got a free pass to do whatever the hell they like because the state has sanctioned them, um, even though what they're doing is just as bad, if not worse, than what Batman was doing. And for worse reasons. It's for their themselves that they're doing this in a lot of ways. Then, fucking daddy's home. I love this. You know, immediately upon appearing, the Batmobile 
basically stops the chase. You know, they've been bumping this thing around for two pages, this van, and Batmobile instantaneously, he knows the road's inside out, and he know, he just uses this bridge to hammer down on the, the van, and the chase is pretty much over. There's then a nice little scene where, um, due to events happening, the bridge collapses in, and Gordon is in the helicopter. Uh, you know, Gordon uses the thing to shout out to Batman to call off the chase, uh, Batman refuses and he has symbolically and literally uh, done some uh, bridge breaking. Um, even at this point, I think that's Joker, even at this point Joker is concerned because ba- uh, Batman has an APB put out on him by Gordon, so that's that's the severing of the tie, it's, it's over now, you know, um, which I love because I love the Gordon-Batman partnership, but equally I freaking love Batman fighting the police. Not not because I have anything against police officers or anything bullshit like that. It's just I feel it's a great dynamic when he has to remain hidden. He if he's this public figure, I don't feel it serves his image too much. And I think it shows that Batman is a good guy no matter what. And it, I think what it's trying to say is if anybody in this story is marginalized or having prejudice against them, it's Batman. Because he's doing good deeds. The public's opinion has changed, but he's still doing what he used to do because he knows it's good. And now they've turned on him, and he'll continue to do it anyway. And I think that that is, um, you know, it shows nobility, it shows stubbornness, it shows determination, and um, all that. And then you get this scene with uh, Freeze out of costume now, of course, because he does not need his Freeze costume. But this has had the effect of rapidly aging him and uh, his tests that he's done on himself have rendered or have uh, communicated that this is irreversible aging to him and watch this sneak boom I love that, I love Batman jumping out of the shadows at people, it's, it just it makes my day it makes me happy, sorry about the glare I want you to go and see this art though so I mean I guess it's kind of a good thing but yeah he just he's had enough um Batman has found out about the connection between his dad, Freeze, and he's found out Freeze is a Nazi. So he is not best pleased that this information was withheld from him. And uh, he's obviously aware that uh, Freeze will know his identity. And uh, again, we get the the bald fist ready to attack. Um, Freeze kind of has nothing to lose at this point. But this is the other thing, like, look, Nora is still there. Everybody is pushing Batman constantly and hoping that they're trusting in his good nature. Like, they're saying how bad Batman is while Batman remains good and they're only getting away with it because he's good. If he was as bad as they said he was, he would un- he would have threatened to unplug Nora. He would have just walked in and snapped Joker's neck. Like, he would have had Harley thrown in a prison that he'd made in the middle of nowhere that nobody could find, you know? Like, if he really cared about taking the law into his own hands and really cared about harming people, that's the sort of action he'd be perfectly capable of uh, undertaking. I mean, this is showing you that Batman would be an amazing, effective supervillain if he so chose, but he's not a villain. He is a good guy. Um, He will always be a good guy, I, I think, anyway. But this is only issue five. There are so many questions... Um, left to answer and I think that this is a little bit like the man without fear in Daredevil in that they're taking everything away from Batman and they don't realise that you know that the man without fear is the most dangerous kind of thing Um, very similar to that storyline I'm not meaning it's a similar motif it's not a similar story in, in at all it's just it's a very ar- archetypal story but I, I feel that People get annoyed at deconstruction, but deconstruction is not the same as when you're peeling back all the layers of a character to get to that character's core. They they are, in fact, completely different things. And um, this is not deconstruction. This is Batman without all the trappings. He's about to potentially lose his secret identity. He's lost his status as a public figure. He's lost his status as a hero. He's lost his... uh, He's lost Alfred because Alfred is in a coma. He's lost his sidekicks because his sidekicks have joined with the Joker. And still he's doing the right thing. And that's not deconstruction at all. That is uh, quite the opposite. So um, there's more stuff towards the end. I'm not going to show that. I'll leave that for you guys to enjoy because I am obviously giving this an absolutely huge recommend.
I have my bat mug of coffee here, if you'll excuse me. Yes, I'm giving this a huge recommend. And um, this is definitely the best one so far. It's got the most Batman stuff. I've, I've glazed over a lot of it. And um, I've not talked too much about panel structure. I've just talked about layout, I guess. But, um, you know, there is lots of that to enjoy. I'm kind of, a, you'll, you can, as you can tell, I'm kind of at a loss as to what I precisely want to cover here. So I'm going to go and really think about this um, concept of maybe picking one theme and going back to an issue to explore that theme or even a page. Um, we'll see what what I do with that. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying the series. Please let me know if um, I've had a lot of people say that uh, they bought this series because I recommended it, which was really quite. Um, I don't know what the word is, but I'm really really pleased about that because um, not because people have listened to me and because I was right, just because I like the fact that I'm helping people discover stuff and. You know, I'm not saying, oh, don't buy this, this is SGW crap. I'm I'm able to recommend something that somebody's going to enjoy. Um, and I think that that's what the community in general is trying to do now, because we've, we've made our displeasure known, and as a, what we call ourselves a movement, as a movement, we're now moving on into the territory of what we would like to see. So we're showing off that and bigging that up. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Tell me what you think about my interpretations of some of these themes as well you know, the mental illness theme, the deconstruction theme. Tell me what you think of uh, what I was saying about the art style, the body types, etc. Um, tell me what you think about Smurf using line work as expression. I've noticed he does that a lot. Like, he'll use scratchy lines when somebody's angry and things like that. I freaking love that. And um, let me know what you think of this issue if you've already bought it and are just watching this for fun. Um, in which case, also, thank you very much for uh, giving me your time. I will um, see you guys in the next video. Uh, I'm not turning into an entirely Batman channel, don't worry. I know the last few videos have been Batman-ish, but <laughs> I'm not turning into a Batman-only channel. Um, probably could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I shall catch you in the next one. Goodbye. Cheers.